to Artie Lang News Center and our expert analysis. Live at motherfucking fire, over now. Bomb show tonight. A white man driving a stuff in his face. Artie Lang, Don Ho. He's gambling on human lives. Oh, oh. Hi everyone, I'm Colleen May, breaking news from the Channel 8 newsroom. Eyewitness News has learned that comedian Artie Lang was found dead in his hotel room at the Hard Rock. Lang was in Las Vegas for the taping of the Howard Stern Show. The hotel has confirmed his death and says that Lang's girlfriend found his body around 7 o'clock this morning. He was taken to UMC where he was pronounced dead. We are following this breaking story and we will of course update you as new information becomes available. Now go home and get your fucking shine box. Look who it is! Party! Overweight, obese, disgusting. <laughs> I got another couple of people hooked on the fat show. My 600-pound life, Anthony. Well, uh, Mario doesn't watch it. He doesn't make fun of it. Why? To listen to this hypocrite. I'm not a hypocrite. He said, he said that you, you call yourself a Christian. You laugh at this stuff. I'm a Catholic. What I'm does that mean? So how come you break every other commandment? Uh, that should not steal. You that are such a fucking hypocrite. <laughs> Catholics laugh at you a lot do, of you people. You do. Exa- you rip people off with those stupid candies. <laughs> You're racist. You I'm know, not racist at You know, my sister marrying a black guy or Puerto Rican. My cousin said that to me that day because, you know, you're a little racist. You're said, a big what racist. The fuck what was he talking about, height? Yeah. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> you know, you could be in a Disney movie, the littlest racist. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, the girl. Now, stop it, littlest racist. <laughs> I'm the littlest racist. Why don't, why don't you squeeze that bottle a little harder so that everyone can hear it? I know. He's trying. He's, he's being fast aggressive. Yeah. A drink in the mic. He's too. a snow white supremacist. <laughs> what did you do in the hallway for 45 minutes? Snow white supremacist. Is that you, the Disney snow white supremacist? <laughs> <laughs> you are, dude. And and then you go, you make good fun of fat people. How dare you try to make us feel guilty? I didn't make... First of all, you steal from us. You were laughing at you, the damn. That's person. what we're doing. We're laughing the way we laugh at you. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, if you're Catholic, you can do whatever you want. You just have to say you're sorry on Sunday. Exactly, it's a great deal. Huh? So what I do, and after I go, I'm sorry. I called uh, Mario an asshole <laughs> every Sunday. The littlest racist. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? You're Puerto Rican. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, you didn't get the vote, did you? I'm against you getting the vote. Hey, let's get across and burn it. <laughs> I'm the littlest racist. <laughs> the littlest racist. <laughs> Phil Collins will sing the song. Racist. He's a racist. Yeah, yabba, yabba, dabba, do time. Uh, so what did you, as the little, I'll give you some a chance to do some improvisation. As the littlest racist, what would you say? <laughs> Hello. Uh... Why does white people only eat white bread? What a dork. <laughs> oh, what an God. unfunny dick lick. You are just like, I've never met someone less funny than you. Why? Because what you just said is terrible. Like, I, I, I gave you a chance to be funny, and you shit all over it. <laughs> the scratch, yeah. <laughs> As the littlest racist, I'll say it again. By the way, Anthony Bowser here. Hello. Mario Bosco. In Hello. The un- in the unfunny seat. And, uh, <laughs> and so Dan should Hall. I sit in a funny seat? No. <laughs> what, what does that mean? I, Dan I, I has one up. foot out the door, man. He is so ready. <laughs> he hates my guts on a level I can't tell you. The looks he gives me in passive aggressive ways lately. We've lived together now for like two and a half years, and he just is so. He, he looks like a broad when they're going out the door. He's <laughs> going home for the holidays. I don't think he's coming back. That's what these broads do. Every one of them. They leave and they say they're coming back. They don't. I'll be come back, back Monday. At the holidays. Yeah, you'll too, come right? back. To, yeah, exactly. Oof. You'll come back home to get your stuff. That's what they all do. And they ask, <laughs> they ask him, I can't be here. Oh, do you mind not being here? No, I'm coming here. <laughs> you have to look at me washing my empedema. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I learned about what that was tonight. It's a big mole. It's a big boulder. It's a boulder of fat. Yep. Uh, that is on a lot of fat people's leg. But we'll get to that in a second. Uh, let's get to the fact that first of all, you're the littlest racist, and I asked you to say something improvisational wise. It's it's like a saw, it's a big beach ball coming in. Any guy can hit it. You don't even have to be funny, and you screw it up. I go the way people eat white bread. What does that even mean? What does that mean? I don't know. Exactly. You have to make sense for it to be funny, <laughs> unless you're doing the theater of the absurd. Damn left. Because you're laughing at you. Yeah. <laughs> They're all gonna laugh at you. <laughs> Were you told that as a kid? Because they were right. 
I'm out with a cigarette. I got a new bitch at Rite Aid. Okay, I'm 49 years old, all right? I've been buying cigarettes since I'm 12. I can't get a cigarette without fucking ID. I swear to God, the Indian one with the burka. You cannot do it. You cannot get it. You can. I have a copy of my pocket constitution <laughs> right here. And it says the fat white person who lives in two constitution, because you live in constitution, you don't know constitution. <laughs> you live in constitution court. I have the constitution and I'm sending you to court before doing a number two all over my wife. <laughs> who looks like, my wife looks like Pete Rose. Okay? I see these women you date. Fuck you! <laughs> My wife looks like Charlie Hustle. She has more hits than anybody ever, and she cannot get in the Hall of Fame. If I sound harsh, it's because I haven't read my pocket constitution in a while. <laughs> you not get Marlboros until I see his ID. You know who I am. I know, but I don't know. <laughs> I know you. Get you. It? I know you. You're crazy. <laughs> I need you not get marble red until I get your ID and steal your identity. And move to Pakistan. <laughs> Wait, does that mean she thinks you're younger than 16? No. Is it 16? No, it's something with the fucking, guess what, the magic word. The computer. Mm. I hate them. <laughs> what are they good for? To join ISIS, right? <laughs> to make sure I don't get cigarettes and for Dan to hook up with guys. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, is this, uh, is this Rocco? Is that your name? Oh, yeah. Now, uh, on the corner of what? 38th and... Wait, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry, Arn, I'm talking to my uh, wife. Right. Sorry, Arn, I'm getting the giant uh, bear season tickets. <laughs> oh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, organizing a sporting event that I'm going to. I'm definitely not talking to a guy named Rocco. <laughs> yes, I have to say I'm, I'm a sports fan. Yes, he's a big bear. He's a big bear. I'm trying to flip him. You're not flipping this guy, buddy. <laughs> Hit the bricks. <laughs> I'm hetero. And by the way, you millennials can have Bruce fucking Jenner. Take him. You can have Bruce Hornsby. <laughs> One of you motherfuckers says Caitlin Springsteen, and you're going to hit with a bat. <laughs> Adirondack across the head. You can't have every Bruce, motherfuckers. <laughs> it ain't born to sashay. <laughs> it ain't born to skip to my loo, my darling. It's born to fucking run. <laughs> you can have Bruce Jenner. Take him. Caitlin Springsteen, them's fighting words. <laughs> Mary, your thoughts? I'm blanked. Jesus <laughs> Do you realize how terrible you are on the radio? Littlest racist. There's Mount Portal. <laughs> erupting. It's erupting. <laughs> what was that? Why did that abruptly stop? Oh, I stopped it. Why? Huh? I thought maybe more was going to come out. My, this is my crew. <laughs> Are you going home for Christmas too? Yeah, of course he is. He's a flatter boy. <laughs> well, why don't you just stay? Because it's, I mean. Yeah, well, he's going to stay. That's the point. I don't I'll want never to come back. back. Like, when, if he comes back, it'll be all passive aggressive. Mm. Well, I did come back. <laughs> that's his. That's, he just bought you paper towels. Shut up. <laughs> uh, that's his move. <laughs> Yeah, that's my move. That's your move. He, he gets he does something for me, then he holds oh, it to my fire. Oh, yeah. Holds it to the fire. That's what I do. Well, I mean, if I didn't have to come back, <laughs> all right, if I didn't have to deal with the bad ball bearings on the Range Rover, <laughs> I'd be here on time. But no, who makes the ball bearings bad? <laughs> the guy who paid for the Range Rover. Oh, my God, the arguments we have. <laughs> so Dan is... Uh, Shoving all these fucking podcasts down my throat this week. <laughs> oh God! So he's like, uh, "Yeah, we've got four tomorrow." What? What a work! Oh, am I, uh, I can't be funny that that many. I mean, come on! <laughs> I know I'm funny, but not that funny. <laughs> it's my fourth podcast. I'm being witty at in one day. Yeah, you it's know amazing. the wit. The wit. Is, uh, it's like you know, Albert Brooks and a young Jerry Lewis had a kid. <laughs> 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 this is how witty I'm being. But he doesn't care. I don't care. No skin off my back. <laughs> He's getting ready for the holidays. He's got to go back. Just, just stop talking. So, uh, no, it's the mother's birthday. Every year with the mother's birthday. <laughs> just send her a card. I don't even call my mother on her birthday. I load her up with gifts the entire year. So she doesn't care, you know. <laughs> and then you skip the birthday. On yeah. Like to, it's Mother's Day. send a message. And, well, she's May. And Mother's Day and birthday in the same week. What am I? Hmm. What am I? I'm fucking uh, Mr. Big Shot over here? <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank God I have a cynical mother who hates everything. She doesn't want to. I don't want to see anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. <laughs> it's fantastic. But Dan, with the mother, okay, my sister. There's some things you have to do where you fake, like be into stuff that oh, girls into. Yeah. My sister texts me on a group text of her and her dogs with Santa Claus. Okay. <laughs> It's a chick thing. I gotta pretend I like it. Oh, wow, Stace, it's great. It's great. Dan comes home. What guy says this to her? What straight guy says this out loud? Hey, did you see your, uh, your picture with did you see Stacey's dogs? <laughs> I go, what happened? Uh, the dogs. I'm like, what? Are they on fire? Like, what are you? Doing? <laughs> Why would a heterosexual guy say this? He goes, no, with uh, Santa Claus. <laughs> I go, what? Did you see the dogs with Santa Claus? <laughs> I go, yeah. <laughs> Isn't it cute? <laughs> Are we really having this conversation? <laughs> Two guys? I'm watching the giant game. <laughs> Are the dogs too with Santa Claus? <laughs> Who can't put dogs on Santa's lap? Did you really think I was going to go, wow, yeah, me and you, two guys alone in the house. Funny. Wow, well, it was real fu funny. What's funny about it? <laughs> What's funny about it? I thought it was cute. Shut up. <laughs> What's funny I just about see it? it? He didn't see shit. He's just trying to talk like an idiot. Oh. What, 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 uh, what, Dan, what's funny about it? I just thought it was, I, I thought it was, I, first of all, she got the three to stand still. That's unbelievable. Who cares? <laughs> How many does she have? I shut his microphone three. off. Three. <laughs> uh, she got the three dogs to stand still. Who gives a flying fat frog's ass? <laughs> They're dogs on Santa's lap. <laughs> Two men alone in a fucking apartment having a conversation about that. <laughs> That's a little fucking weird. What about the dogs? I thought one of them like tripped and got sent on, set on fire. <laughs> That's when a heterosexual guy brings that up. Oh, God. See the dogs? No, what happened? Did, did a coyote eat them in front of a horrified woman? <laughs> no. No. They were on Santa's lap. Excuse me? <laughs> I mean, I mean, what? Dan, explain yourself. What is funny about that? How does Bill Murray hang out with you? <laughs> he knows some of the funniest people in the world. Did you call Harry and tell him that? Harry Shearer? <laughs> no. Of course not. Because he'd have the same reaction I'm having. <laughs> Only he'd be saying funny stuff. Harry's got a dog. Harry's got two dogs. Yeah, but does he call you when they're on Santa's lap? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> if my, I don't know. If I was on Santa's lap, you'd call somebody. Because I, <laughs> I've clearly lost my mind. <laughs> Would you like to go sit on Santa's lap? Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try to count to 10. One, two, three. I can't, it doesn't work. <laughs> See the Giants? Yeah, exactly. If one of the Giants were on Santa's lap. <laughs> if Lawrence Taylor was on Santa's lap. Fuck the Giants, Mike. They lost my Cowboys. Go stand outside. <laughs> what? Oh, my Cowboys no. fucking lost to those assholes. Go stand outside. Yep, they did. What Just made, like they did earlier in the season. What, what made you go outside before? I want to I want to write it down. Because you guys were conversating and I didn't want to be in the way by well, talking. Well, it's the same thing now. <laughs> So go outside. We'll call you back in. You serious? He pouted. He gets up in the middle of our talk. He thinks someone's... And Dan almost did. Dan almost showed him the picture of the dogs on Santa Claus. <laughs> no. Look, did this cheer you up? It's so funny. Come on, buddy. I got something to cheer you up. See the dogs? I don't know how she got them to sit still. I just don't know it. <laughs> and Mario goes, wow, you're right. I'll come back in. Hey, Art, you see the dogs? And we have that conversation. Everything's fine. That's your dream world. You thought like a little spoiled fuck that we're gonna run after you, and that Dan would have. Anybody's running after. And Dan would have, but we didn't. It's tough love. And Dan is the nicest guy. Dan almost him. got up. Dan said to me with a real concerned look, "I, oh, you know, he's upset." Dan's a nice guy, not me, pal, <laughs> not me. And I'm the boss. You know who's the boss and speaks French and has two thumbs? Moi. <laughs> uh, and. <laughs> I didn't want his raviolis to get cold. Anthony's an equal partner <laughs> oh, in, the, in the apartment. You're the boss. Anthony is always a hierarchy above me. And was, shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Mario, I can hear you. Shut up. I'm looking at the picture of the dogs. I, listen, listen oh, to me. God. Listen to me. I have to go outside. <laughs> Why are you showing him the dogs, Dan? You're distracting me. Both of you go outside. I did. I had the phone over just leave by it, me. Just leave it on and go outside. <laughs> Turn the mics on and go outside. I'll call you. I'll call you when we have a podcast. <laughs> Then why do I come here? What, what, what'd you just do? <laughs> what was that? He, he knocked the phone down. Get outside, phone. dickhead. You did that on purpose. Did you just do that on purpose? No, I uh -oh. put it down. You fucking, you were mad. How dare you break something? I didn't break anything. I put it down. 
Bye. Bye. So Are you really? I love the walk. Outside. I love the walk. <laughs> <laughs> he won't leave because he has to pay for the Uber if he leaves. <laughs> oh, did you really send him outside? Yeah. <laughs> Make sure that door is locked. <laughs> I see he slammed the door too. But he wakes up those kids next door. I swear to Christ. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, th- so anyway, so Dan, <laughs> why don't you leave now? Le- leave for Chicago now. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll wrap this up. He cannot wait. He can't wait. I mean, I know I'm difficult, but Jesus, he probably wants to see. He wants to see well, his mom. He, see his friends. I don't. I don't have an epidemia. That's true. What if I had an epidemia? <laughs> Actually, Mario is like my epidemia. <laughs> they probably weigh as much as Mario. I'm looking at the size of him on the show. Boschetti's head used to be my epidemia. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> By the way, we have to talk about our friend Mike Boschetti. He's sending out tweets that are very disturbing. And uh, I'm not even joking about this. Well, a little. Uh, now, it, we have a theory about it. He, he, he sent out a tweet uh, with all those emotion things. And uh, and the crying, right? And again, for a guy to send a bunch of crying, oh, I can't even think. That's like, that's like, uh, the well, dog, what I think dogs in Santa. <laughs> well, that's the thing; it's secret. Well, me and Danny are pretty sure we know what it is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and he, but he goes, you know, when your heart's broken and you, and you give some your heart to somebody and they don't return it, it's so sad. And then he has all these crying things. Oh. And I don't know what to do. You have the exact thing, Dan. Read it. Yeah, because it's very like, and again. I, I, and I don't mind saying this because he, he said it publicly, Mike, and I've had the same issue. So, you know, you can, you know, doesn't mean you're not cool or anything. It's that out, maybe. Uh, but <laughs> well, the holidays can get dark if you're. I don't know. I don't know. Issues, yeah, I know you're talking about, the, right, uh, Christmas and Hollis Queens. Mm. Very dark. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but, uh, you know. He, he, he needed help another time in, in this world, and I helped him because I had gone through the same thing. And Mike was always nice to me, but he was in the hospital because he was a little down, a little depressed. Uh, right. And uh, apparently his mother bought some mirrors. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. oh. He had always thought he looked like Scott Baio. Oh. <laughs> Fonzie. Chachi. That was his big... Yeah, right. Fonzie was a big hey. he, he didn't take down the Fonzie post until he was 44. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's kind of awesome. He, and he thought the blue part of the globe was the sky. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, that's yeah. the best. It's the best. That's the best. He didn't play football because he didn't want to wear a second helmet. <laughs> and even after he got the big campaign with Kentucky Fried Chicken that I told him about, he, <laughs> he was going to play the bucket in the chicken commercial. <laughs> His head would be the bucket of 48 piece. <laughs> they never went that high. He'd be a principal, no lines, but a lot of royalties. <laughs> He, uh, he texts, well, look what he tweets. Some people have really and severely hurt me this year. Cry, cry, cry emoji. Uh. And I hope they realize what then did, but by then it will be too late. Cry, cry, cry emoji. All right. Whoa. Is that a suicide? Uh, uh, is that, he says, well, by then it's going to be too late. What does that mean? What, is that, what could that mean? Is he going to get a haircut? What's that mean? <laughs> It's like, and it's always on Saturday nights too, because last Saturday it was the I want a woman to hurt. Okay, now here we go. You ready? Yeah. Yet? I want go a woman to, to hurt. Go to, me? go to Stacey Pressman's Twitter or or Instagram and see if she recently tweeted out her and a guy living it up in a little city we call No Bochetti Land. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> so he's got a crush, unrequited. Yes, he mm. came in here. Here's what this chick pulled off. I met Stacey. She's right. con con woman. Mm. Here's what she pulled off. She wanted to be on the show because she's 45. She's playing rooms that Levy wouldn't even play. She's headlining <laughs> bowling alleys. Yeah, she's at a she's at a film festival with some guy. Uh, it's a two couples. Could I be more right? <laughs> could I be more perceptive? Okay, this none is more one. right. Is the guy black? <laughs> oh God! <laughs> That's like five more cry emojis. I'll tell you some five more cry emojis. That's a jump off the building. Emoji. <laughs> is there an emoji of someone jumping off a building? <laughs> <laughs> is there an emoji of someone loading a 44 Magnum? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a cry and then a gun and then a death. A cry and a gun. <laughs> and a shot of Biggie Smalls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, is she with a guy? Yeah, it's two oh couples. Oh, my God. And she's one of the couples? Yes. yes. Who's the other couple? 
Uh, I don't. I don't know who this. They're not famous. What's the guy? They're not famous. Oh, they don't exist. <laughs> like Stacey it's an older Texas. guy. And... Famous people. What did that even mean? <laughs> they're not famous. <laughs> I don't know who they are. You Do think... they have dogs? She doesn't have names either. Who you they think are. like such a broad? <laughs> I mean, they're not famous. What? What? what, what my Barbara Walters? What, <laughs> they're not famous. I haven't been in People lately. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> First of all, who famous does she hang out with? I'm the most famous person she knows, and I'm like G list. <laughs> As uh, you know. That, what an odd thing to say. Uh, every once in a while, Dan lets you into the real Dan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you said Monday evening football on Sunday. Monday I did. Ne- I never said that. <laughs> Going to tune in for the Dusk game. I never game. said that. <laughs> and I turned on the Giants game. He wasn't uh, even watching the game. Uh, yeah, well. I was watching 600 Pound Life, the most heterosexual movie. <laughs> that is really a sleeper. You know what I'm glad I, I know about that show now. You know what I wasn't watching? I wasn't watching, hey, the dogs are on Santa Claus Life. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> he really thought we were going to have a conversation about that. God knows what you say about me, brother. Probably with Tim, he's playing the Tim angle. Like, Artie, Artie, can be, Artie can be very difficult. And I think you're going to be a life coach. <laughs> you should go to Tim life coach. Tim wants to be a life coach? No, Tim doesn't. <laughs> really? Yeah. Tim wants to be a life coach. And he gets mad at me on seven-hour drives on the road when I, I just inquire about what a life coach does. He thinks I'm making fun of him. I said, well, every time someone asks that question, it does sound like you're goofing on it because it's retarded. I say, what does a life coach do? That in of itself sounds like you're goofing on it. Yeah. Because it's, there's nothing, it's goofable. Right. And then he explains to me after, he goes, you're going to make fun of him? No, I'm not. And then he explains to me what it is and... No one has to say anything. <laughs> so I said, you're in school right now for this. He goes, yeah. I go, what do you do? He goes, well, like, I go, what if I want a life coach? He goes, well, I'd ask you some questions about your life. <laughs> and I go, like, what? He goes, well, you know, like, what are your eating habits like? And I go, okay, what if I told you, life coach, before bed, I eat a stick of butter, <laughs> and then I swallow a stick of butter, and then I go to sleep. What would you tell me as life coach? I'd tell you to stop doing that. So you've laser pointed, you've used your laser focus <laughs> that only someone who went to life coach school could use. You've laser focused on the problem. You've troubleshooted. You've said, in this scenario, Art, the problem is not that you're going to sleep. That's good. <laughs> the problem is the stick of butter. So as a life coach, and I'm like the Vince Lombardi of life coaches, I go, don't eat the stick of butter. <laughs> really? Yeah. My God, that's right. Your life will change. I bet that's why I have a headache when I wake up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you have acne? Sometimes. I bet that's why. <laughs> Man, try it one night without the stick of butter. And then call me. <laughs> so it was hard. One night, I don't eat the stick of butter. <laughs> I wake up way more refreshed. I don't have like a thing of lead in my stomach. I feel yeah. great. No digestive distress. Yeah, yeah. Right. I waited till the morning to have a stick of butter <laughs> and a bagel <laughs> and some uh, tro- a Count Chocula. Well, I always, when someone's a life coach, I want I want to look at their life first. <laughs> well, now listen. <laughs> yeah. You're you're, 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 you're moving ahead in the story. Yeah. Because I, that is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Very perceptive. You could be a life. Maybe I should be a life. Yeah. Well, well, we this conversation we just had, you're already more qualified. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So right. So, so I said. So Tim. So, in life coach school, they teach you that the stick of butter is what's wrong in that scenario. <laughs> and I go. I know sometimes it's not as obvious. Sometimes maybe a guy has half a stick of butter, and you know, well, maybe you can't have that. <laughs> Depends on your metabolism. And uh, I said that's great. Now, okay, here's the big thing. What do you charge for that? I have to make a living at this. What do you charge for telling me not to have a stick of butter right before I go to bed? He goes like one hundred and fifty dollars. <laughs> I go, could you could you say that again? One hundred fifty. I go, okay. Wh- wh- what if I go? No, I don't want to pay you. <laughs> do you sue me? And then we're in court, and you actually say to a judge out loud because you're defending yourself. I assume, <laughs> Your Honor. Without me, he'd be eating a stick of butter every night. <laughs> <laughs> and what if I? What's the comp- What if I find a guy to tell me not to have a stick of butter for one hundred forty dollars? <laughs> <laughs> it's an open market. <laughs> it's thank you. It's an open market, unless Trump calls the guy. What if the life coach is moving some to Mexico? <laughs> like carrier. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and he, then he goes, are you making fun of me? <laughs> I go, it's very perceptive. I forgot I was talking to a life coach. <laughs> <laughs> so he laser focused <laughs> on that. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? He's a life coach. The idea of a life coach. So then I went into this. This was very insulting. I should have done this. I went to your point. Let's look at each other. Look. Okay. First of all, you're the life coach giving me advice. All right. Number one, the most obvious thing. You work for me. <laughs> <laughs> I employ my life coach. Number two, I'd like to see your W-2 form. <laughs> and I'm going to look at it. And by my math, and he uh, he made well, he confirmed this. I thought I guess fourteen thousand a year. He makes eighteen thousand a year. Okay, <laughs> you're my life coach. You make eighteen thousand a year, right? Where we're driving right now? I'm going to yell the stupidest shit in the world into a microphone for an hour, <laughs> and I'm going to triple your yearly salary <laughs> tonight. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah. Who needs so, a coach? <laughs> so what are you going to tell me to do <laughs> to be more like you? <laughs> what am I doing wrong, Coach Fuckface? <laughs> well, you know that's not true. Yes, it is true. Do the math. I'm making fifty grand tonight. You're making eighteen thousand this year, and I'm having a stick of butter before uh, the boy God is bringing up a stick of butter. As a matter of fact, you're bringing me the stick of butter. <laughs> I'd like it room temperature. <laughs> yeah. By the way, it's always room temperature if we're in a room. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what about that? My life coach wow. is bringing me the stick of butter. Uh, I won't bring you the stick of butter as your life coach. Well, I'll just say I'll double your yearly salary. <laughs> what if I give you 300 Double what I was going to pay you to bring me the stick of butter. <laughs> You'll probably say yes. And that's how the world goes around. So my point is don't become a life coach. <laughs> There's another calling. Uh, you're a con man is what you're doing. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, you know, I, I life coaches to me are uh, you know better. Like my father was a life coach. Well, another bad example. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of a life coach for me. Well, anybody who's not a junkie. Uh, so in that case, Tim might be. Uh, but uh, you know, you remember remember just say no. Yeah. With Tim, I say just say grow. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> See, but Tim, I'm good oh, at slogans. Man. I'm good at slogans. I write bumper stickers. <laughs> <laughs> you could try that. My life coach just showed me a, a picture of a 400-pound stripper he's fucking. <laughs> uh, again, a sham. A sham. But listen, life's not all about money. Like Obviously, what I'm talking about there is it's very shallow. I'm making more money than him. Uh, what else is there to life? You know, embracing and enjoying it, I certainly don't. Tim goes to CrossFit uh, conventions. <laughs> Uh, and he, he enjoys life better than me. I don't have any hobbies. What does Tim do? Is he golf? Does he play racquetball or something? No, he does CrossFit, and that's about... And well, CrossFit's big, though, because he goes on retreats and stuff. Wow. Right, like CrossFit retreats. And he follows his cousin. What's his cousin? He follows Bruce. Oh, <laughs> Wait, did we say it's his cousin on the Yeah, oh, yeah? We, we did? we've said it a bunch of times. All right. Does Bruce know? He's Bruce Springsteen's cousin. Now, if he was Bruce's life coach, <laughs> oh, man. that would be impressive. I'd love to see that kind of Right, that is like, so what am I doing wrong? <laughs> <laughs> well, really um, I, I don't know if I'd open with Backstreet in, in Paris. <laughs> oh, damn, that's a good idea. Tim. You're natural. <laughs> yeah, listen, Tim, man, you're just so good at this. Uh, can I write you a check for the 150? <laughs> <laughs> hey Tim, it's Uncle, it's uh, cousin Bruce. <laughs> yeah, cousin Bruce, you can run. Uh, <laughs> never heard that before. Listen, uh, I need some life coaching. <laughs> I'm in Detroit, and I was gonna open up with a Devil at the Blue Dress, uh, but uh, uh, they're really big, uh, born in the USA. Fans. <laughs> So, so it doesn't feel right. Yeah, don't think. Yeah, right, exactly. Something's wrong with it. Give me a call back. And also, right before I go on stage, I have a stick of butter. <laughs> <laughs> Bruce, Bruce, hey, cousin, cousin Timmy, great message. I'm thinking positive. I've got a Tony Robbins positive attitude for you. <laughs> you caught me in the middle of my embolisms, which is this <laughs> exercise right here. Uh, listen, I just played four softball games. Listen, uh, it's called. Oh, you're gonna call me Coach Sullivan. 
<laughs> because it's, it's not a, listen i'm so I, I, it's unbelievable the coincidence a small world just had a patient with the same <laughs> stick of butter problem okay and i'm going to use this i'm going to apply the same focus i learned in life coach school for you all right <laughs> don't eat the stick of butter tonight try not to right before you go on stage i'm doing some embolism and uh yeah it's an exercise i invented right i'm going to patent it I was wondering if you could mention it on your next tour. We'll get it. We'll get to that. Anyway, uh, can I have ten grand? We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Uh, so anyway, uh, yeah. Try not to have a stick of butter tonight. Where are you? <laughs> right. Okay. Well, it's okay. The Devil of the Blue Jets is somebody else's song. Do you think you can get the rights to it? Okay. Fine. <laughs> if you can't get the rights, don't. It's it's wasted money. You don't want a lot of overhead. Okay. And I would lose. Uh, I would lose the new keyboardist. <laughs> Just a thought. And wh- see if he wants a life coach. And uh, Clarence's son, he looks half black to me. We'll talk about it later. Uh, yeah, I think you won the mulatto there. I'm holding for laughs. All right, so now how do I get the 150? Do I have to call? Uh, who do I call now for the 150? Patty? <laughs> Patty, it's a... Uh, the life coach? Yeah, the life coach. Click. Hello? Hello? I, have, I just have the service number. <laughs> Hello, who's this? Is this Pat? No, it's a, it's the uh, landscaper. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, is this Monroe? Yeah. Okay. The last time I get, Bruce gave you the 150 for me, it never got to me. What's <laughs> happening, Monroe? You accusing me of, yeah. You're accusing me of stealing your money? Yeah, that's all right. That's right. Why? Because I'm black? Are you black? Yeah. <laughs> Click. Hello? <laughs> Patty, it's Tim again. Click what? Where's Bruce? <laughs> Hi. Yeah, listen. Can I talk to Gary W. Talent? <laughs> Gary. Can you get in touch with Bruce? Click what? <laughs> <laughs> Nils. Nils, you know I'm good for the 150. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened. Bruce didn't pay me again. Yeah. The landscaper thing. Click what? Hello? <laughs> Everyone in the band <laughs> hangs up on him. <laughs> <laughs> Is this the trumpet player to Broad? Yeah. <laughs> This is the broader place the violin <laughs> from the rising. I always liked you. Click what? <laughs> is this Federici? <laughs> He's dead too. Click. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. When did Federici die? Click. <laughs> Listen, Danny died owing me some money. Click. <laughs> <laughs> I did some coaching there at the end. Yeah, I did some coaching. <laughs> I said, "What's with you? <laughs> Get off the tour." Click. <laughs> uh, okay, fine. The Mighty Max. Click. <laughs> 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 is this the Mighty Max and Sun clip? <laughs> Can't get anybody here. Little Steven clip. <laughs> <laughs> this is the guy from Rage Against the the the, the Pontine. Tom Barilla. <laughs> uh, is it Tommy? Click. Tommy. Click. <laughs> Motherfuckers. You know, well, Bruce, listen. With interest, you owe me like eight hundred bucks. Oh. Phone calls. Click. <laughs> Remember, you wanted to call it Sunshine on the Edge of Town, and I said, "Dark enough." <laughs> <laughs> Remember I rewrote that album? <laughs> Remember you were mad at the executives you wanted to call it Born in the USA? What? <laughs> <laughs> I said that'll be terrible. You'll sound anti Semitic. Never make a dime. Yeah, Born in the USA is terrible. Well, we would have bought him freehold. <laughs> uh, Tim's life coach. When your life coach is not high enough to get on the scrambler. (laughs) (laughs) When your life coach is not tall enough to get on the fucking log flume. (laughs) (laughs) Too short for this ride? (laughs) Man. My life coach can't get on the log flume. (laughs) Ages four and up. At Seaside Heights. Where can I ask what um, school he's attending? What is, what is this? What is life? Coach uh, driving school, university. <laughs> yeah, we got a DUI. No, no, it's a life coach. No, what does, he, what does he take there? Uh, wellness, yeah, yeah wellness. wellness. That's a euphemism like wellness, that, right? Yeah. That's a euphemism for bullshit. Uh, yeah, it's a euphemism for laser. <laughs> it's a euphemism for don't eat the stick of butter. <laughs> yeah, wellness center. Give me a break. Right? Give me it's a like break. The, something like that. Probably. Oh, I know. It's like what it was the the other type of kind of therapy or something where you don't like you don't use medicine. Right. Uh, <laughs> or you don't watch the news because you don't want to have any negative that's waves. What he, that's what he said. All the news oh. is bad. She doesn't take yeah. much news. Wait, really? Yeah. yeah. Where does he get information from? The uh, intranet? His buddy, his buddy Eddie, <laughs> <laughs> who works at the Reebok in Boston. <laughs> yeah, no, Tim is the name of guy. Like, I get just as much news information as you, and I don't buy the paper or whatever. 
come my ex-girlfriend with the it same just kind of comes in right well, they, yeah what? they get facebook alerts while they're reading the news oh, so one of, my, one of my ex-girlfriends would be like my god a terrorist attack danielle got her hair colored <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> what? frowny face yeah i'm following terrorist you attack, wham. Yeah, i'm following you i'm making the life coach emoji <laughs> <laughs> which is me taking 150 dollars from you yeah which is a hand out <laughs> <laughs> Open hand with dollars in it. Well, you know, this tangent was Boschetti. Um, Do you think when you kick Mario out, he sits in the uh, the little kid wagon that your neighbors have? Where's Mario right now? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was picturing. I know, and the woman comes out and goes, ah, God, that woman hates my guts. It's like so obvious. She loves Dan, though. Dan is one of the gals. <laughs> Uh, but but uh, the, the woman she gives me that look I know of disgust <laughs> and when her kids are with her she physically covers them up she doesn't even know she's doing it and, like, oh, hi, are you? <laughs> and the one kid likes her hey what's up you know, eh. the one kid's in commercials and so we talk showbiz talk we talk uh, you know, we, <laughs> agents we talk shop <laughs> oh we yeah talk shop yeah how, how old are these kids? Three and two. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's seven and the one who's in the commercials, Dan, is how old? I think the, three or four, yeah, and okay. then there's the older one. <laughs> when so he's like, who represents you? Yeah, exactly. It's like, hey. I'm at CAA. <laughs> I'm at CAA. <laughs> uh, and the first word in the, remember, it sees another word, carpool. <laughs> <laughs> Should we go to New York together? Uh, no, but she's very like you know, uh, you know. Yeah, that's my daughter. Bye. <laughs> They're modern day pro- pilgrims. <laughs> and meanwhile, th- th- they have the blackest ghetto chick takes care of them. That 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 uh, that nanny. Ever talked to her? She's ghetto man. Yes, she is greasy. <laughs> but she's attractive. Oh, look at that! <laughs> Listen, I bet a little cream in the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Borrow a you, cup of sugar. You are attractive. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting a nice vibe from you. <laughs> and she's like, I'm getting a vibe from you too. You want to be my boyfriend? <laughs> uh, what do you mean? Yeah, she's kind of cute. She's got that black. She's you know. very attractive. She's got a great body. She's got black. Mm. Back. She has those one. little like those little like um, zits that black people get, but they don't. Uh, they form like a carpersole or a carpuncle or something. Yeah, it just like bumps. It, yeah, it gets bumps. It's very bumpy. So when they shave, uh, you know. Women, when they shave their their arms, it gets bumpy, very bumpy. And you look like that woman in Detroit <laughs> that we just saw. Oh, Teresa. My 600 pound life, Teresa. Ugh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What well, did you do to me with that show? Now I want to see more. It's, oh, it's, it's a problem. amazing. She looks like King Kong took a shit. <laughs> <laughs> With, it looks like King Kong ate a pink house coat oh, and, a, and an oxygen tank. Oh, and that's man. what he shit out. Oh, yeah. And my favorite fucking line in it, her son Darius. <laughs> hey, Darius, could you go to the food shop for me? And he goes, now? <laughs> and then the husband, Carlton, just sits on the couch <laughs> and looks so depressed. <laughs> he looks so depressed. Yeah, he does. Hey, Art, you got that laugh coach number? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say when he was walking around? The cover of Depression yes, Magazine. If Depre- Depression Magazine. <laughs> He's on the cover every week. <laughs> <laughs> he's like Britney Spears had that run once. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, he looks like he goes. He's putting up. They they move into a small apartment in Houston because that's where Doctor Slurpee is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he uh, and he's he's got to uh, take care of them. Uh, he's the executive producer of the TV show. He got points on this. It's really disgusting. <laughs> Who really? Yeah. Oh. The the doctor. Yeah. No. It's like Doctor Drew with Celebrity Rehab. He wanted me to go on there every time. I'm like you're making money off this. The last offer I turned down was three hundred fifty grand for Celebrity Rehab, three weeks. And I would have room with Dennis Rodman. I'm like, do I want to kill my mother? Just kill her. <laughs> uh, you know, to go with, through withdrawals on TV, there ain't the amount of money I would do That's, that for. Yeah. Well, I guess there is, but... I would make a deal with my mom. I'd go to her and say, look, all right, I never have to work again. Not that you're going to work in any scenario. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh... And, uh, or, uh, you know, I'll keep this life. No skin off your back either way, is there? Nasty. Okay, so here's what Bushetti works out. Yeah, because I want your, uh, a life coach to say, I want your decision on that. Okay, what are we tr- still trying to get to the bottom this of the sta- Right, are we yeah, going to leave Mario out there? Stacey Pressman, this chick, I, again, Stacey, I have no reason to hate her or, or like her, you know, she seems all right. But she did work out a deal where Bushetti came to me and said the only way I come on the show mm-hmm. is if Stacey comes on the show with me. 
Right. So who do you think had that bright idea? <laughs> mm. Do you think she mentioned that? <laughs> I'm going to go with yes. Right. I'll be there to protect you, Mike. Wow. I'll be there to comfort you. <laughs> I was here one of those days. Yeah. I mean, while she doesn't do anything, she's, she's intimidated by it. She's not going to protect him. Yeah. It gets worse. Yeah, okay. So she would come along like the empedema. <laughs> and uh, she was very nice. She was here for six months. Remember she said that funny thing? What show was that? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> what day did she say the funny thing? I'm trying to think. It was the same day Gino said something funny. Because <laughs> they did it back to back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm then, sorry. I thought this was the Artie Lang podcast. Was it that show? Yeah, the name of yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, when Gino said, oh, "What is Artie? What is this your show?" He said, "What is this the Artie Lang?" And then it's not. Oh, wait, it is. Well, <laughs> <laughs> now that you mention it, well, Gino, what, Gino would stop. Uh, you get mad if I was being funny and you're doing like a four page monologue. <laughs> uh, but uh, Gino has not refused to come in here, and he's holding his horses right there. Yep. Yeah. Last time I saw him, he was uh, making out with a cigarette machine <laughs> with dark circles under his eyes. Really dark. Life, and, uh, life coach. Yeah. It's a life coach. He needs a life coach bad. <laughs> he looks like Teresa. <laughs> oh, God. The bottom of his eyes look like Teresa. Oof. Without, oof, the, without oof. the house coat. <laughs> Oof. So, uh, yeah, so anyway, but that was the dynamic. Okay. And so, now, so, right, yeah. so Stacy is an attractive girl. You know, 45 years old, no spring chicken, you know. <laughs> Hall of Fame, uh, Hall of Famer in 1986. <laughs> now she's for the Hall of Fame speech oh, with like man. bad knees and shit. <laughs> but uh, still ready, <laughs> still ready. She'll still bring it. Certainly out of Mike's league. <laughs> and uh, so she's playing with his heart. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a very big, swollen heart to play with. Mm -hmm. She's smothering his heart, much like his stomach. <laughs> are they like you know do they text and stuff are they buddies oh yeah, yeah. yeah. so and he's probably all do we about have ta that. his tape of her talking to his, him talking to her cat and he taught his oh her, wow he taught her cat racist stuff <laughs> listen to this is the cat black or her white her cat snuggles and he's trying to teach it racist things out of nowhere this was astonishing <laughs> I think he's trying to be funny but the, Dad do we have that tape yes it's Excuse unbelievable this is, our cat's name is snuggles listen to this <laughs> okay uh, you teach a cat to be racist wait, you're gonna hear it <laughs> Hi, Snuggles. Hi, buddy. How are you? Hope you're doing good, Snuggles. I love you, buddy. I'm so glad you're feeling better, Snuggles. I'm so glad you're yourself again. Mommy told you you're doing really good. You're a big boy. <laughs> That's right. You're a big boy and a good boy. Right. I'm going to see you Thursday, Snuggles. Okay? Because I'm coming to visit Mommy. And you know what? I'm going to bring you a toy. Because you got better. And you're a good boy. You're a big good boy. You're a good boy, Snuggles. <laughs> night, night, buddy. See you Thursday. Bye, Snuggles. Love you. What just happened? No, it's, it goes no, Dan, automatically. Dan, no, where's the other thing? Where's the other one? That was creepy. I, I've got Dan, the other one. Dan just ruined it. I mean, he wants to get out of here so bad. No, it did. I'm it, like, did Dan play the wrong one? Dan, don't make an excuse. He is he trying up. to get fired? No, no, no. He was supposed to play the one where he's teaching the racist stuff. And he well, plays the wrong one. That one was creepy. He just played the wrong one. <laughs> I can't believe he did that. That is like, I mean, <laughs> you have to try to fuck up that bad. <laughs> Well, you'd have to explain it to him. You Dan, wanted to I Dan, stop making excuses, Dan. It's so embarrassing. You fucked up. You said that was the worst fuck up I've ever seen. Play the one I want now. Okay? It's that it's that one was creepy. I said he's teaching the thing racist. Explained. It's explained. <laughs> <laughs> it's very simple. Another hour. Hi, Snuggles. I'm a shit out heroin for you. Hi, buddy. I'm a little shit out heroin for you. I I stop it again. Stop, up stop it. Hope you're doing good. Snuggles. You did it again. You're, Niggas you're are stupid wrong. and violent. Right. I love you, buddy. <laughs> Just eating and shitting. Just stop it. Stop it. Stop it. This is not true of white people. I'm so glad you. That was a compilation. Yeah. Well, why did my. Why did my. Th where's the one, the original one, with him saying the, 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 the racist stuff? He just said it. He just said. Yeah, but he started out with me. That doesn't make any sense. You're right. Me yeah. with the heroin, that makes no sense. There's one without that, though. Okay, hold on. I got another one. Well, I mean, it's the, the, there's no joke. So did she. Uh, did Stacy give these to you? Would she like to listen yes. to these? Yes. Yes, yes. All right, let's try it again. 
Hi, Snuggles. <laughs> Hi, baby. Niggas are stupid and violent. I <laughs> hope you're doing a lot better, buddy. <laughs> Mommy said you're a good boy. Niggas are stupid and violent. <laughs> That's right. Mommy what said niggas fuck? are stupid and violent. <laughs> you're a good boy. What's and you went to the bathroom. Goody. <laughs> you're a good boy, Snuggles. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Hope you're doing better. What the bad? Well, I'm a stupid good boy. You know what that means, Snuggles? Niggas are stupid and violent. <laughs> you're on a scratchy post. That's right. You were good. Niggas are stupid and violent. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, that, that's that's really bad. By the way, Dad, that was it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, isn't that creepy? Yes. Now, do you think the cat should be rescued? <laughs> By like, Maybe. Uh, black Lives Matter? <laughs> oh Cats Lives Matter? <laughs> Cats Lives Matter? <laughs> uh, okay, it, it, the, the joke was this. That kid who shot up the, the, the church. Right. This is why Bushetti's a home brother. He wrote that manifesto, that racist manifesto, and it was terrible. Like they printed it in the New York Times because oh, right. they wanted people to <laughs> you made see how bad it was. So I said to Bushetti when he came in, I said, Mike, listen. Oh, every black yeah. comic said to every white comic look if you want to help us say this out loud and don't edit yourself because it will show that racism exists I said I already recorded it I said we all recorded it so just record it for us so he goes absolutely you want to be part of the fight right the anti-racism fight yeah so show we don't care like in other words he goes we don't care about the language and he can't he can't, he can't shock us that's what he said to okay and so we had him read the whole thing. Oh and God. we had those tapes, and we just added them into the talking to the kid. <laughs> Amazing. And that's what we do every once in a while. And Bushetti gets hate mail. He does? The end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bushetti's got a lot of hate mail from Black Lives Matter. <laughs> well, also, okay. Well, Yo, motherfucker. <laughs> Try, my, a cat killed my brother. <laughs> and you probably talked to that cat. <laughs> my, my cat got scratched to death by a, a, my brother. My black cat got beat up by a white cat and your brother. Your brother killed my cat. <laughs> Did you talk to your cat and my brother? <laughs> Motherfucker. <laughs> Racist. Teaching racism to animals. <laughs> What's next? Anti-Puerto Rican shit to your mouse? <laughs> <laughs> Mother. Anti-Semitic shit to your fucking coyote? <laughs> you don't talk to an animal like that. Not in this neighborhood. We're going to kill your ass. Do you have a goiter? I can find you with that goiter, motherfucker. It's like an antenna. You got that gorilla enclosure in your second chin? Motherfucker. <laughs> Teaching Stacy Pressman's cat racism. I don't know what's worse, the actual tape of the snuggles. That's, that's creepier. Like the that snuggles, actually. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, one that's not edited. Yeah. That is not, play the first one again, Dan. It's super creepy. That's not... Okay, this one that Dan played in place of the one I wanted to is not edited. And I guarantee Dan will play the racist one right now. It makes my skin crawl. Okay, this is not edited. This is him talking to a girl, talking to a girl's cat, trying to get in with the girl. And he's 52 years old. <laughs> 52. Go ahead. <laughs> From the attic of his mom's house. Hi, Snuggles. Hi, buddy. How are you? Hope you're doing good, Snuggles. Unreal. I love you, buddy. Unreal. I'm so glad you're feeling better, Snuggles. I'm so, so glad you're yourself again. Mommy boy, told you you're doing really good. Up. You're a big boy. That's right. You're a big boy and a good boy. I'm going to see you Thursday, Snuggles. Okay? Because I'm coming to visit Mommy. And you know what? I'm going to bring you a toy. Oh. Because you got better. You're a thing. good boy. You're a big good boy. You're a good boy, Snuggles. Night, night, buddy. See you Thursday. Bye, Snuggles. Love now, you. Now, Dan, play you wow. talking to my sister's dog. <laughs> this is Dan talking oh, to my sister's dog. I need a second. I got to find it. We don't. We're good now. <laughs> Do you think Mario went home? <laughs> <laughs> I, not, he, not if you had to pay for stuff. <laughs> Dan, you didn't secretly get him a car, did you? No. no. Good, all right. Don't do that. Don't enable. Will Mario pay for the car or freeze outside? <laughs> he's either sitting in the hallway or he's down talking to Ariel. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I think this is it. All right, this is Dan talking to the dog. Okay, hold on. My sister's dog. This is real. Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! 
got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. Oh, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> the dog was here. I didn't what leave it on the mean? machine. What does that mean? As long as you didn't leave that on the machine. Yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> the dog was here. That's even worse. It's like you're going to fuck it right in front of us. <laughs> Yeah, we're trying to do but that's right. It was worse. We're trying to do the show. You weren't even here. What is that my move? What is that? <laughs> Unbelievable with you and dogs. Well, look, those dogs are cute though. They are adorable. They're like the one direction guys. <laughs> <laughs> I will take a break to find Mario just to see if he's outside and leave him there I, I, I have to see if he really is sitting somewhere if he's talking to Ariel if, if we're gonna call down to the doorman Ariel and say by the way I have a doorman named Ariel looks like a, he's like in a Disney movie <laughs> is he a princess uh, I said yeah when Gilbert comes here he thinks she's the parent <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ariel how are you are you getting royalties all right I'm gonna call down and go, Ariel. If that little guy, if that little man's there, uh, throw him out. Should we call in the <laughs> podcast? Ask him, ask him, him to sleep. Ask him to sleep outside. <laughs> All right, no, well, yeah, well, no, no, no. Because Ariel's, Ariel's a little uh, they get in trouble. Uh, okay, so um, uh, 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 Anthony, I thought it'd be funny if, um, well, interesting if we uh, to show you the process. <laughs> That creates two bestsellers in a row. Behind the scenes. Yeah, one of them, number one bestseller. Mm-hmm. The other one debuted number 12, by the way, not talked about enough. <laughs> they all said, oh, you're not promoting it on Howard. It's not going to debut on the bestsellers list. Fuck off and die. <laughs> I'm at the Beverly Wilshire. I'm doing the book tour. I'm on every fucking show on the planet. Eating subutex like a Count Troculus. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm with my uh, girlfriend who, uh, you know, was, uh, you know, she didn't, uh, she didn't make you get uh, some of the best rooms. It was about four grand a night. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, of course, the mini bar. And we had to put up Dan. Oh. Uh, so I, uh, uh, they were good times. <laughs> they were actually. Tim was there, of course, in case life coaching was needed <laughs> on the tour. We went to that great restaurant. What was the restaurant? I don't know. Uh, the one in Santa Monica on the beach. The Ivy. Ivy, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. That is good. I, I, I think I got that bill, too. Uh, cost me about, uh, the trip cost me 200 grand. I made 180 on the book. <laughs> so, uh, logical trip. <laughs> I, uh, no, so, I, I, you know, everybody was out there, the gang. I was doing Conan and Kimmel and a bunch of other shit. You know, it was like the book tour. And, uh, again, everybody's in my head, including our ex-agent. This last time I talked to our ex-agent, by the way. Mm. I get a call from someone at the uh, office of the new publisher, Stacey Creamer, at Touchstone, which was a part of Simon & Schuster. Ever fucking hear of them? Anyway, no self-publishing here. <laughs> and uh, she goes, yeah, a little, little piece of news here. We're going to debut at number 12 on the list. Now, the list is 25, which means we're in the top half. Yep. They didn't take any advertising, uh, even like with me not there. They wouldn't let us play commercials on Stern that he wouldn't even hear. Maybe a little hostile move on their part, don't you think? I thought so. But I'm the asshole. Right. The people who touched on books and art, we've never had this before. They wouldn't take our money. Yeah, they weren't exactly. even capitalist about it. So, number 12, top half of the list. And I called Abate because I wanted to tell him. I called our agent. He was one of the ne'er do wells. Yeah. One of the naysayers. Get out of the business. <laughs> he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He almost cost me 200 grand. Anyway. I wouldn't have money for the Ivy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So, thank you, uh, Anthony, for two in a row. And then, of course, it came out and paperback. Two, two bestsellers in a row, two paperbacks in a row. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll tell a quick story. It'll be recorded. And uh, I'll ask Dan to send it. And it'll send the Bushetti call. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to haunt my dreams, but the, but snuggles. The, oh, yeah, it really is. <sighs> Think about him. Make, see, so, okay, so basically, the Bushetti thing is he, he that that girl. Imagine that girl he is willing to do that for. Yeah, breaks his heart. Jeez, fourteen crying emojis. <laughs> He's a fifty-two-year-old Gindalone. Yeah, uh, mother. They're not dating. Mm-hmm. Well, she she didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I don't know what to do. So we left him a nice message, but uh, he's depressed. Yeah. 
He said when you give your heart to somebody and they don't return. Maybe he was talking about the cat. Snuggles. <laughs> oh. Snuggles. I'm going to bring a toy. What's his toy? His cock? Oh, oh God. I'm going to bring that toy you like. <laughs> that toy you like that has just those two friends? <laughs> you know the toy and his two friends? Yeah. Covered in cat. Right, covered in cat. <laughs> Remember, Mommy thought it smelled like the uh, your uh, your litter box? <laughs> no. That was Uncle Mike's tape. <laughs> oh. Remember I took out the toy and it smelled like litter box? Oh. It was a litter box. No. No. <laughs> mommy didn't clean out this litter box. <laughs> but I want to get in your mommy's litter box. <laughs> Snuggles, where's mommy's litter box? <laughs> uh, it's me. Snuggles. <laughs> Who, who's stupid and violent, Snuggles? Can you repeat? <laughs> <laughs> meow, not the M word. No, not meow. Other word. Snuggles. <laughs> Can you be racist? Snuggles. Can you be anti gun? <laughs> Snuggles, where's Bobby? <laughs> She's at a music festival. What? <laughs> <laughs> Who's that guy with her arm? Yeah, it was her music, around Mommy. Oh my god. She had a music festival with, with Don Cheadle. <laughs> uh all right. So um rest in peace, Mike. <laughs> Don't kill yourself. It sounds like a suicide note. By then, it's too late. What does that mean? Yeah, it was pretty. We'll find out late? Wednesday. He said he was coming in Wednesday. Seemed pretty sad and desperate. Yeah, unless Wednesday's too late. <laughs> he says he's coming in to get us like out of his hair. You understand? He's not coming in. What's Wednesday? You'll be in Chicago. No, I won't. When are you going to Chicago? Thursday. What day is this? I was going to go Friday, but the, there's a massive snowstorm. What day is this? Today is... Monday, right? Today is Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday. So tomorrow he's coming in? No, today's Monday. Today's Monday. Sorry. Today's Tuesday. Well, technically. Yeah, to- yeah, yeah, you're right. But it started as Monday. <laughs> so when are you going home? Thursday? Uh, Thursday. Because it's a snowstorm? Yeah. Whatever. I saw sunny on Friday. I saw clear skies. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, yeah. If you don't want, if you don't want to stay here and help me, that's fine. <laughs> I'll hose down my epidemia. I'll be back on Monday. I'll hose down my epidemia myself. <laughs> <laughs> Someone needs to put a metal high school lunch folding chair in the shower. Oh, my God. That was <laughs> horrible. I could sit out and clean out my epidemia. <laughs> you, you've talked about this show quite yeah, a bit yeah, on yeah. the podcast. I love it. So people know. Well, I call it my 600-pound podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my 600-pound cake. <laughs> I yeah. love that 600-pound pound cake. Mm-hmm. Oh, that would be great. <laughs> Every one of these fat people have a vanilla cake mix as the first thing on their list. Yeah, they do. That's weird. <laughs> I love when she's like the lasagna, the big box. Well, yeah. Definitely yeah. not giving you the small Right. Yeah. <laughs> Darius, the big red going box. Going hungry. Listen, I want the lasagna, the big red box. <laughs> <laughs> Shots over there. And there's an air conditioner above her that was installed in 1964. <laughs> <laughs> the girl from Epidema. Yeah. <laughs> fat. And gross and smelly, and it's got a lot of blood vessels. Yeah, it's oh. Chuck's empathy. Oh. <laughs> he wants you to bring the dirty rice to his bed so he can eat it like he's fucking the bed. <laughs> like a dog, it's his empathy. <laughs> like a snake eats mice. <laughs> You've got two kids. One is retarded, the other one is Chuck's empathy. Oh. Chuck's empathy is in the second grade. You've got to take a turn. <laughs> Chuck's empathy. Empedema's at the bus stop by itself and it forgot to write your train code and it's all dirty and oh my god. Oh Chuck Sempedema looks like the vampire in closings on Van Helsing with you, Jackman, who's not gay, even though his wife is elderly. <laughs> <laughs> you, Jackman, is not a homosexual, and even though he hosted the Tonys and he wore a big shirt that had ruffles on it. <laughs> you, Jackman, has 18 Brussels Griffons, his favorite oh, one is named Tippy, and oh my god. Oh, god. <laughs> <laughs> you Jackman is 38 and good looking and a movie star and a millionaire and he's got a wife who's 48 with big uh, matronly arms <laughs> <laughs> can somebody say red flag red flag <laughs> <laughs> You Jackman is really chiseled and cut and good looking and a multimillionaire and he's famous. He's 34 and his wife is 52. <laughs> With big chins and she's a good reader and she doesn't care about sex. She's a good reader. 
<laughs> There's absolutely no way you Jackman's homosexual. <laughs> when he hosted the Tonys, he had a cane, and he asked them if he could take the cane home and use it at home. <laughs> they said yes. He had a white tuxedo on with tails. <laughs> <laughs> he knew all the words to every song in Pippin. <laughs> <laughs> and he can dance. <laughs> and he can dance. Oh my God. <laughs> it's almost like he's Michael Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> you Jack was a Matt fan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the one that got Dan. I, uh, <laughs> That's the one that made Dan choke. <laughs> Uh, Snug, I've got a gift for Snuggles when I come over. <laughs> hey, Snuggles, it's Uncle You. <laughs> <laughs> it's your birthday and Mommy feels good. <laughs> Who's that guy with Mommy? He's got a nice chin. <laughs> I want to die. <laughs> <laughs> I want to die. It's not, it's kind of crowded in this closet. <laughs> <laughs> I want to eat like a dog. I want dirty rice in front of my face while my wife cleans our retarded kid's diaper. <laughs> and works. And works and works and works and cries. Then works. Then cries. Then cooks me my dinner. Then washes my epidemic. <laughs> then she takes my Anuber sweatpants and covers the house roof <laughs> in case it rains. I've got big blue eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I like Tally Savalas. <laughs> Niggas are stupid and violent. 